Good afternoon. In the 70s, while I was in college, I only read nonfiction. Self-help books were big. I was searching for direction like we all are at that age. What Color Is Your Parachute was a book that caught my attention by Richard Bowles. Bowles maintained a person could make a living at what they love. But a job was a job, wasn't it? And how could he talk about making a living at what you love? Passion for something doesn't make you a living, does it? And so the years flew by, and I was busy with family and life, and jobs became jobs. And I learned I could make my best living by selling. And so I sold. I soon settled into an area that I knew and I loved, and I learned. I sold specialty foods, mostly on the road, for over 20 years. But the road became too long. And in 2004, during a trip to Provence, we haunted the outdoor markets. Early in our trip, we learned that there were markets in every town if you were willing to travel a little. And we visited most of them. One day, we even arrived when the vendors were setting up, and we did stayed until they were breaking down. I was fascinated by the variety of goods, the beautiful displays, and their simple way of doing business. There were vendors of every sort, young and old, and selling something they knew and they loved. You could tell. Whether it was saucy san, olives, tablecloths, or beautiful cheeses, it was heavenly. Little did I know that trip would truly change my life. Just months later, I resigned my job with the thought of slowing my pace. I told my husband, John, all I wanted to do was sell cheese at the Muskegon Farmer's Market. He said, why not try? And two weeks after I quit my job, I had a name, the cheese lady. The name picked because you know we all call the people at the market by what they sell. <laughs> we buy tomatoes from the tomato lady. We buy apples from the apple man. I also had a legal borrowed place to cut cheese, insurance, an amazing white striped banner that proclaimed I was the cheese lady. I sold out that first day at the market. I was a friendly stranger selling a product unknown to most at the market, but it was so much fun. I decided to continue through the season's end. And as I continued to sell cheese, I realized that tasting the cheese was huge. In this day of supermarket shopping, tasting to decide if you want to buy, like the old-fashioned delis used to be, is unknown. Cheese to many has become a commodity item, something to stick everything together, or to pop in your mouth, like puppy chow. People were actually surprised that cheese tastes so good. Market patrons who tasted bought. But that was only part of the equation. Telling a story became the next part. Where was the cheese from? What kind of milk was it made from? Who was making it? And when was it made? And really, sometimes you could ask, why was it made? Even after selling cheese at a wholesale level for seven years, I didn't know all those answers. So I began to look for them. And in this world of available knowledge, I found as much information as I could absorb. And I began to have a story to tell. The more I knew, the better my sales pitch, of course. But also, the more I knew, the more interesting it became, even to me. Think about the statement, the more you know, the more interesting it becomes. It is only possible to be passionate about something if you know something about it. And really, the more you know, the
the more passionate you can become. It makes sense. The more I know about cheese, the more you know about global warming, the more she knows about old cars, the more he knows about the man in the moon. Think about it. It began to occur to me that perhaps passion was learned, in a sense. And I continued to be open to information. And as I listened to my customers, I was constantly reminded of the tastes and smells are the great connector, the great reminder. When someone tells me that this cheese or that reminds them of their Uncle Joe or their grandma, I understand. Most of us grew up around a table where certain foods meant family or company, whether it was sardines, stinky cheese, or artichokes at my house. Tastes and smells can remind us of people. They can bring us back to places, whether it's a football game, Christmas time at grandma's, or that trip to Provence. In 2007, after two and a half years at the farmer's market, I opened a small shop. Now I could sell year-round. Now I could sell all those delicious accompaniments that I thought should be served with cheese. The jams and the nuts, the pâtés and the honeys. Keep in mind that for those two and a half years, I had been glomming on to every little bit of information I could get. I'd learned early on that the secret to my selling cheese was knowing something about it. Knowing not only what it tasted like, but knowing bits and pieces of its origin. It was fun. And as I learned, I became more passionate. In 2008, we realized that the business was growing, and we recommitted to staying in downtown Muskegon. We also knew we had outgrown our space in one year. So we moved the Cheese Lady shop around the corner to our current location. During those early years, we recognized that the knowledge and the passion that we showed for what we were doing was giving us a niche. In fact, no one seemed to be doing exactly what we were doing, sampling everything and giving them a story about it. We were learning. We were becoming even more passionate about what we discovered. And soon, yeah, Shelly. <laughs> she wasn't happy about that picture. <laughs> And soon the regular customers began to learn with us, or sometimes to teach us. In my first sales position in the 80s, a wonderful customer said to me, don't pretend to know more than I do. I've been selling this product for 30 years. And so he taught me. And I've been picking my customers' brains ever since. After all, my foreign language skills are non-existent, and I've not been to the Fairbalt Caves of Minnesota. My international cheese travels are limited to layering Huntsman cheese in England and seeing the Roquefort Caves of France. I have much to learn from anyone who has seen and tasted somewhere else. Each year, I continue at the farmer's market that gave me my start. The market reminds me where I began, and it gives me a sense of freedom by being outdoors. In closing, 40 years ago, I didn't understand how passion could create a living. It really has for me, one puzzle piece at a time. The challenge we all have is to follow that hidden yearning and see where it might take us. Remember the tasting. Remember the stories. And remember the growing knowledge. It really, really can make you passionate.
Thank you.